I want to show you guys these never before seen photos of fugitive murder suspect Caitlin Armstrong. They were sent to me by a viewer out of Austin, Texas, and it includes a photo of Caitlin's sister, Christine Armstrong. Check the links below if you want to see me go in depth about this case where Caitlin Armstrong has been accused of shooting fatally her love rival, Anna Mariah Mo Wilson. She was this fabulous 25 year old cyclist. She had this guy she saw on and off, I guess, Colin Strickland. He purportedly has nothing to do with the crime. He just so happened to be the man in the center of the controversy. So a viewer sent me these photos of Caitlin Armstrong and I'm kind of amazed by how pretty she looks in some of them. She has her standard long curly hair. Caitlin doesn't look at the camera in all of these photos, but by this viewer sending me these photos, it made me realize how few photos of Caitlyn we've seen. And when you're talking about a murder suspect fugitive on the run anywhere in the world, you want as many photos of Caitlyn out as possible. Caitlyn's dad has been on the news claiming that the things that police are accusing Caitlyn of doing, horrific, horrendous things, aren't true, according to Caitlyn's dad. He's saying, that's not my daughter, she couldn't do this. Of course, perhaps any family member would say that. There's been a bit of a question about her sister, Christine. Has Caitlin hijacked her sister, Christine's identity? in order to travel and get away from the cops. We are going to examine these theories. I'm very grateful the viewer sent me these photos because Caitlin apparently deleted her social media. We covered that fact when we covered the long arrest affidavit and all of Caitlin's movements. So let's talk about that too. I found it curious but understandable that Caitlin's dad did not provide any photos to the media that I could find, nor apparently has Christine. Of course, Caitlin's family might not want her to be found. Who knows? The more photos out there of her, the better. We don't know how much Caitlin has changed her appearance. Let's take a look at everything we can find out about Caitlin and get clues to where she might be. Has she gone to bed? Folly. That's another question I have in my mind after this viewer sent me more information. First up, on June 23rd, 2022, the U.S. Marshal Service gave us more information about that black Jeep Grand Cherokee that Caitlin had been driving. Apparently, she sold it. Investigators learned that on May 13th, which would have been just two short days after the murder of Mo Wilson, Caitlin sold her black Jeep Grand Cherokee to a CarMax dealership in Austin for $12,200. And then only one day after she was questioned by authorities who let her go because of a mishap over her birth date, Caitlin got this check from the dealership and she departed the Austin airport on May 14th. Investigators also learned that Caitlin was dropped off at the Newark Liberty International Airport on May 18th. This was only one day after Austin police issued a warrant for Caitlin as a homicide suspect. Police performed their due diligence and research. They looked through all the flights. They couldn't find a flight booked under the name Caitlin Armstrong. I'm not sure if they checked for the name Christine Armstrong because according to The Sun, perhaps Caitlin got a driver's license under Christine's name and maybe traveled that way. The U.S. Marshals are calling this a major case and the hunt for Caitlin has brought all sorts of rewards because people want to find her. She could be armed and dangerous. Apparently, Caitlin did a whole bunch of jumping around to different airports, perhaps trying to confuse the cops. Cops think that Caitlin was at the Austin International Bergstrom Airport on May 14th, where she boarded a flight to Houston's Hobby Airport. Then cops believe Caitlin took a Southwest Airlines flight over to New York's LaGuardia Airport. That's when they lost the trail of the five feet, eight inch tall yoga instructor who weighs approximately 125 pounds. Indeed, in these photos that are newly released, that I had never seen before. She does look tall and thin, tall and slender. In my previous video, I noted that on Caitlyn's boyfriend's Instagram, Colin Strickland, 
you saw tons of videos and photos, I could only find two photos of Caitlyn. One was a pretty straightforward photo. Another was a photo of a woman in a cycling hat looking off to the side whom Colin called his friend Kate. So we don't have a lot of photos of this woman. And in the photos we do have, now we see some from the sun and some that my viewer sent me. Some show Caitlyn and Christine. They look very similar they're not standing. You can't tell the height comparison between the women, but they are both two good looking young women and they both have relatively long hair. They seem similar in age. Caitlin is 34 years of age. It's not clear how old her sister Christine is. However, according to the Sun magazine, Caitlin may have retreated to visit her sister at a place called Camp Haven. It's in upstate New York and it's not a far drive from LaGuardia Airport where cops believe Caitlin's trail went cold. Camp Haven is only a two and a half hour drive from LaGuardia Airport. It is a place where Caitlin's sister Christine moved recently from Austin up to the camp to live. The Sun makes it clear that they are not suggesting that Christine is helping Caitlin get away with murder. Neither am I. In fact, they are wondering, has Caitlin done something? Has she stolen her sister's identity without her sister even knowing? It's a possibility. The Sun publication actually visited this Camp Haven, Livingston Manor type place on Friday, June 17th. And they found signs saying, no trespassing, caution, out front. A woman named Maya who runs the nonprofit declined to comment to the sun about whether or not Christine or Caitlin were spotted at the camp. But Maya did admit that police had been there to the camp. So we know police are doing their jobs and just looking for any place Caitlin may have run to. Maya told the sun, I don't want to talk about it, waving her hands. It's been crazy here for the past few days. That's why I don't want to say anything. The Sun interviewed people. They showed them photos of Caitlin and Christine, but the people interviewed there said, those women don't look familiar. The locals were thinking if Caitlin was in this little Camp Haven area, they would have known. The Sun says that US Marshals are aware of the Camp Haven and they called it a possibility that Caitlin could have been there. So it seems like they didn't rule it out they didn't rule it in. They didn't want to tip their hand. But obviously, Caitlin's not in custody as I record this, so they haven't found her yet. However, with the information that my viewers sent, I'm wondering if Bali is a possibility. They say that folks who run away often go to places that are familiar to them. So even if Caitlin did stop through this Camp Haven, maybe it was just to grab some of her sister's identity and say goodbye one last time before she went off on the run again. And I'll tell you why I think Bali might be a possibility. Previously, I pointed to Iceland as another possibility because that's where Caitlin and her boyfriend Colin apparently spent some time. Now the Sun did some great investigative work. They were the first to report that Christine Armstrong was living at this Camp Haven place because they confirmed it by phone with a spokesperson on Wednesday, June 15th. But that spokesperson would not tell the publication how long Christine had been at Camp Haven. But a private investigator, Jason Jensing, was able to find out more information. And Jason found out that Christine registered Camp Haven as an address on May 17th three days after Caitlin Armstrong was last spotted. Now here's the kicker. That same day, someone calling themselves Christine Armstrong appears to have applied for a New York driver's license under the name Christine Armstrong. Was it really Christine Armstrong, Caitlin's sister? Was it Caitlin or some other woman? Jason, the private investigator who has 15 years experience, believes that Caitlin could be traveling under her sister's name, Christine Armstrong. He wonders what are the odds the last place that Caitlin was seen was at New York's LaGuardia Airport on May 14th. All of a sudden, three days later, what are the odds 
that a woman who shares her sister's name, Christine Armstrong, pops up and appears to have applied for a New York's driver's license. The PI wonders, did Caitlin steal or borrow some type of ID from her sister, like a passport or something else from Austin, and use that ID in order to get herself a driver's license in New York with her face on the photo and an obscure address that couldn't readily be connected to Caitlin. It is a big mystery, but I know it is possible to get an official looking document. Maybe it might be harder these days, but back in the day, I know a woman whose sister was a couple of years older than her. She took her sister's documentation right there to the state of Illinois driver's license place and presented it and used it in order to get a state ID with a different birthday on it, just to appear older, just to get into bars or places where you had to be 21. It is possible. This Camp Haven calls itself a sustainable retreat in New York. They want to inspire a person being one with nature and it looks like pretty big grounds, but are they large enough and obscure enough? I know there are food sources. It looks like a little store is in the place, but could Caitlin really hide out at this camp for a long period of time? Or was it just a jumping off point? Was it just a rest stop if she visited there at all just to get in a private place to get her bearings in order to get this New York driver's license that could perhaps take her anywhere in the world? Let's talk about where those places might be based on Caitlin's bio as a realtor. Now, as much as Caitlin tried, she couldn't wipe everything clean off the web before people got screenshots of stuff. Thank God. Copper Sotheby's International Realty had once posted to Facebook a post welcoming Caitlin. We are pleased to welcome Caitlin Armstrong to our Cupper family in Austin, read the now deleted post. We are honored to have her as one of our distinguished associates. Caitlin was called a tenacious agent who offers a distinctly competitive edge to buyers and sellers. Caitlin Armstrong thrives on making real estate dreams a reality. I see why they deleted this because it wouldn't be a good look for their company. She welcomes new opportunities to work with clients interested in all the amazing neighborhoods Austin has to offer, specializing in both domestic and international relocation. So that part is key. Not only did Caitlin help clients relocate, for example, from California or maybe New York or somewhere in the United States, she also specialized in moving them in internationally. So this would give Caitlin an edge if she's thinking about how do I escape? Where do I go? She's a worldly woman, a worldly traveler who no doubt had her passport already and perhaps her sister had one as well. There might not have been a waiting process to obtain a passport if Caitlin was able to grab her sister's passport, get a new driver's license and travel as her, especially to a country that does not extradite back to the US. Caitlin also specializes in investments and commercial properties. Caitlin is an integral part of her community. That's what her bio bragged about her, a natural born connector, dedicated to building lasting relationships with clients and colleagues alike. In the face of everything we learned about Caitlin in that arrest affidavit, when she shook with anger, when she figured out her boyfriend had seen Mo, I don't think she was specializing in lasting relationships there. Caitlin draws on her diverse background in competitive sports and high level corporate positions with Fortune 500 companies. We don't really know which ones those are. At least I haven't found that info out yet. I only know about Caitlin cycling. I know about her being a yoga instructor and a realtor but I don't know what other company she worked for. It's an experience that allows her to excel in all facets of this business, it says. Caitlin started writing mortgages at 19 years old and brings over a decade of real estate finance and asset management experience in Detroit, Austin, Los Angeles, and Singapore. Apparently she's been to all those places, Singapore could be another option of where she fled to. That's what she brings to her current life. 
says her bio. Caitlin's love of architecture and design enables her to help clients envision the possibilities of a property, while her mathematical acumen ensures they are making a sound investment. Boy, if Caitlin wrote this, she really makes herself sound like a superwoman. No matter the goal, Caitlin remains keenly aware that real estate is so much more than simply a transaction, but instead a highly emotional decision that affects many aspects of a client's life. Now that's true, but if only her clients knew what Caitlin was up to and how her emotions allegedly went out of control when she learned her boyfriend had gone swimming and out to eat at Pool Burgers just for a few hours with Mo Wilson that fateful night, and Caitlin was all after Colin, all in his phone. She must have tracked him. Somehow she figured out what he was up to. And unfortunately, 25-year-old Mo Wilson paid the price of Caitlin's rage and jealousy. Caitlin is a graduate of Eastern Michigan University where she studied accounting and finance. In addition to her work in real estate, she is co-founder of a vintage travel trailer renovation company titled Wheelhouse Mobile based in Lockhart, Texas. Now I'm wondering if this is what Colin Strickland posted a lot about on his Instagram. So were they in business together? Chances are Caitlin and Colin were in business together. She is also an avid cyclist who enjoys exploring new destinations and bike packing with friends. It's pretty much noted that while Caitlin and Colin had dated approximately three years, according to the arrest affidavit, she's not described anywhere I've seen as a fiance or is set to get married. She might have even been in business with Colin and Caitlin even lived with Colin, but they don't seem like they were meshed. It doesn't seem like there was a plan to get married or even an engagement that I can find. When she is not helping clients achieve their real estate goals, Caitlin teaches and practices yoga. Dedicated years of training in Bali helped Caitlin take her breath work a meditation practice to a new level. Now that part made me laugh. Caitlin wants to come off as this totally zen woman and her breath work and her meditation and she's all chill, where the arrest affidavit describes her as a woman who just kind of went still. When cops presented Caitlin with all the evidence they had of Caitlin being near the crime scene that night, of Caitlin being caught on camera, her black Jeep Cherokee being caught on camera the night of the murder. In hindsight, reading this bio is crazy. That variety of experiences has given Caitlin a unique view on the importance of lifestyle choices and how one's environment can play a major role in one's overall health and happiness, creating an even stronger desire to help her clients find the home that will help them reach their highest potential. Well, that was all shot to ish, wasn't it? With one horrible decision, if Caitlin actually did the things that cops are accusing her of doing. One 25 year old beautiful pro cyclist, Mo Wilson lost her life. And now Caitlin of sorts lost her life as well by making the terrible decision if she did it and going on the run, she'll likely be caught or if not, she'll be off in another country. Perhaps she's in Bali, perhaps she's in Singapore. Maybe she really is in Iceland, one of the places she's familiar with. They say we tend to return to the familiar. She might know exactly where to hide out in one of these foreign places. Maybe she never will return. Maybe she's cut her hair, maybe she's dyed it, maybe she looks totally different. And what if Caitlin did come to her sister and beg, Christine, help me, help me, please. Would that be a very difficult thing for a family member who loves someone to turn down? And perhaps that's why her dad thinks Caitlin could never do that. We always want to believe the best of our loved ones. Did Caitlin commit this crime? If so, I really hope Caitlin slips up and is captured ASAP. Let's close with Matthew 1625. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me 
will find it. I think that's very appropriate. Caitlin is on the run, either because she's innocent and scared and doesn't want to be imprisoned, or because she's really guilty of killing Mo Wilson and she's equally scared but doesn't want to turn herself in. Well, what kind of life will she have? Always living in fear or always looking over her shoulder? Even if she is in some gorgeous country where you can shower outdoors and eat fruit off the trees nice and ripe, could she really enjoy her life knowing what she did to Mo and being angry at a man that she can never be with again? A man who himself has gone into hiding because he is afraid of Caitlyn. What? was the point of it all. All this experience and beauty and love washed down the drain for no reason. Caitlin will have to make money somehow and some people figure it out. Some people figure out how to make a living, live off the grid if you will. Imagine if it does work for years and years. Maybe she meets another guy. Maybe they even have kids. Maybe she lives this life where she thinks she's gotten away with it. And then one day, the knock on the door comes or her door is knocked down and she loses everything again. I think the smart thing to do, of course, is to just stop running. Will Caitlyn ever turn herself in? That's what police want. They want her to have her day in court and to tell the truth and to tell her side. So take a good look at all these photos, share them, share the video. Thank you so much for watching. I do pray that Caitlin does come in safely. You know, we don't want anyone else being harmed in this tragedy. We want her extradited if she is in another country, and we don't want law enforcement or anyone around Caitlin or anyone to get hurt with them trying to capture this woman on the run. Look what happened to Vicky and Casey White. A life was lost unnecessarily. So let's pray it doesn't end like that with Caitlin and that Mo Wilson will get her justice by her perpetrator being brought to prison. Thanks for watching.